to have a set of modules with specific versions that suit your given project. Now, let us try to create a virtual environment. So for this, we will start a new terminal. I clicked on new terminal and I have a new terminal here. I changed into the directory with cd command. Uh, the cd command is cd, whichever directory you want, right? Current directory is dot, no impact, but uh, that's the idea. cd followed by whichever directory, c for change, d for directory, that's the command. And this works on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Right, so go to the directory that you want with cd command. And you have the Python interpreter, Python 3. You press Python 3, it shows you that it exists. I'm using 3.13, type exit, followed by open bracket, close bracket, and press enter. Now, what this has given you is you entered Python, you realize now that you have Python locally installed, now you have need to create a virtual environment. So if you want to run a Python module, a module, there, were, there are certain modules which are pre-installed or you, the ones that you can additionally add or install uh, are available with Python, right? Last time we created our own module. Similarly, there are Py modules that you can use. So to get the isolation at the project level, in this case, in the PME folder, I'm going to create a certain set of modules. You can do it many ways. So I'm going to say minus M, which is module. So Python 3, invoke the module called VENV. Now it's going to tell you certain things about how to use them. And this is true for all the modules that, you, that can be run via Python straight away. At least most for most part, it is available. Now, so, so it wants to say which is the directory which you want to create, right? I'll create a, a directory called my n, right? Should, in reality, it should never be my n. It should be whatever your project is. So it can be like my project, right? And let's enter. So you find the my project directory there. So if I say cd command, which we talked talk about a little earlier, so my project, right? The ls command is the equivalent of dir there. So you see it creates bin, include, lib, and the configuration file. Now, if you want to install certain set of libraries here, we will look at installing a certain library called pandas at this point. Pandas is a very useful library. It helps you process data. It can help you with data science and data engineering. Uh, it has got its limitations and its strengths. Strengths being it's been there for a very long time. It's stable. And the limitation being that it is a little resource heavy. But for now, let's not worry about it. If you do a ls bin, so there are certain files. So you find there is a library called pip. This is by the way called pip, right? So I'm going to say pip3, right? Pip3. Let's just run pip3. See, there is this install command which is available to you. There are a bunch of things which are available to you. you can install and install freeze. We'll look at that in a while. So we're just going to say pip3 install. A and B as pandas. Yeah, like Kung Fu Panda. Right? For now, this is our Kung Fu Panda. Let it do right. Now, it says on the Mac, it doesn't like doing this. So now, I don't have an active environment. My operating system tells me, hey, look, what you've done is not quite right. So, I can go to this particular my project folder and say, as on the I showed you the bin folder. The bin folder has got this activate script, right? On Windows, you will use activate.ps1. On Linux, you can use activate.csh, activate.fish, or activate depending on your shell. If you are not sure, just use activate. 
uh, and so how you'll do that is you'll on Linux and Mac you'll type source bin which is this folder slash activate and if you see it says I have activated my project so now we have got an environment around Right, so now we have an environment around us. So we go click a new file and I type in import and I go and so as I was saying. It is a good idea to save your file at this point and type in the name of the file, right? It's a good idea to call it main.py. This is going to be the first files that you're going to be using. It doesn't have to be main.py, but main.py gives you a certain correlation with what you have been doing in other languages. If you have come from a Java or a C or C++ background, main, uh, your main function makes sense. So just to keep that understandable, we are just called it main.py. So now let's go on to the next step to read some file with pandas, right? Let's go on there. So what you've done is now we clicked on the Python here on this number, version number. Then it asked me to choose, I need a find and I come to the particular project. My project, I locate bin and I know there is a Python 3. So I choose Python 3 as my interpreter, right? And The interpreter is now working. So, so what we have done is again find bin Python 3. Sorry, interpreter. Right, that's what we did. So now that we have got this code, let's look at the next step. As the next step, we will save this file and we will file open folder and we will choose the folder which we wanted and click on open it tells you that this is the environment which is available so i'm going to choose here and say i want this as my environment the moment i choose this you'll notice that the red line here disappeared because the lib which has already got pandas is now understood by your code. This is an important stage of telling Python that my project folder, my project now has got the libraries that it requires, has got the interpreter that it requires. So we have mapped it and we should studio code at the bottom is telling you where it can find it. All right. So the, what does this code say? This code says, I need pandas which I have alias as PD, right? We saw alias equal for module for a shorter name for easier reference. Let's assume you got a 46 alphabet name for a module. Will you type it again? No, right? So you are given a short form of that, which is understandable by the text programmer as well. And then this seems to be a convention, pandas as PD. You'll find so many codes which says pandas as PD. If you see PD, most likely it is pandas. That's it, back to this one. And our code is now talking about reading data with pandas. We will run this in a bit before we get there. I hope you have got up to this point. And next what we do is we just print it. So type in this code and get, so type in this code and get ready to type in some data for testing. We we'll create a file, new text file, and we will create data. And then let's just do this. Name, password says name, age, and address.
right? Now we have got this file and we will save this as data.csv. We use data.csv because we called it data.csv here. Now we'll try running this. You if I move my hand here, you'll notice this red dot. This allows you to run the code one line at a time, which you could not do in your notebook that easily. And if you change this to debug Python file, give it a moment. And we are going to say debug Python file. See that? Right. Now, this option, you see that line has come here and there's a yellow indicator here which says I'm ready. This color may change depending on the theme which you have chosen for your VS Code. And that is it. It's an indicator which says what you can do next. You can press F10. In my case, it's F10. Step over is F10. So I'm going to press F10. And you see now the line is come here, the yellow marker is here. And I'm going to press F10 again. So if you see, now you have read that particular file. The first row is just the data. It says name, age, and address, and next is the actual people's data. This row is known as the metadata, while this is now the actual data. And now you have read data using pandas. Congratulations, now you are truly on your way to processing data.